All right, guys, I'm here at Bond Share Caves. I'm joined with Scott. He was my tour guide. I got some fossils here from Manitoulin Island, so I'm hoping that we can check them out. He's got a big extensive board here with all sorts of different things, and we're going to see if we can identify them. Perfect. All right. So you want to pull out some of your fossils? Yeah, for sure, Scott. Uh, let's see. Let's start off with this one here. So if you remember from the last episode, I found this fossil here, and I called it a horn coral. Okay, so this fragment right here is actually a really good example of what we call Rugo solitary. We prefer to call it horned coral just because it's very pointed, right? It makes perfect horns. Now, this is actually a form of coral, right? And for this to survive, it needs a very shallow and very tropic ocean. Now, this was very found locally. Where did you say you found this? I found that at Manitoulin Island. Manitoulin Island? Okay, perfect. See, it turns out, for there to be a very shallow tropic ocean, we would have been at one point in time near the equator, and that's due to continental drift. And that's why we find some coral which would have been living in the sea in North America. All right, so um, I was told that the fossils found here at Fonshire Caves are probably a bit earlier, or a bit later, sorry, than uh, Manitoulin, about 150 million years? Yes, so in, so that would have been much earlier than what we have, would have found here. See, we would have been found about 450 million years ago. Our fossils are specifically from the Ordovician time period. Okay. Now, that's also known as the time of the invertebrates, so any um, life, animal life, in that point in time would have had no backbone. Cool. Kind of sounds like some people I know. Oh. All right. Now we got this thing here. It's kind of like a spine-looking thing. I think it's like a tuber of sorts or a part of some plant. This tube right here, very distinct lines going across, of course. This is most definitely an example from a crinoid right here. Okay. And you know that sure looks like a plant, doesn't it look? Yeah. yeah. It actually is an animal, and it would actually extend its its foot-like stem into the sea floor. It would plant itself. It would actually use its tentacles above, and this would actually be used to filter feed. So it would sway in the water. Now these guys stood at about three to four feet tall, and these are actually very rare. Now, finding long segments like this it's, it's very rare to find because it's hard to find when they're very intact. See, they usually break up and they disperse along the seafloor in rings. These ones I found on Goat Island. So, when you find long segments like this, it's very rare. Whereas if you find um, very, very uh, distinct rings in the limestone, it's more common. Okay. It, I'm just saying it's rare because they rarely stick together for this long. They usually break up and separate. Yeah, very delicate. Awesome. And, uh... I guess uh, one of the last ones here is I got these sponges. You can see a structure on the bottom, kind of yes. like the inner structure. And then the top is very bumpy and dimply like a golf ball. Yes, yeah, so this looks like another form of coral. I believe this is tabulate. Tabulate. Okay. Yes, tabulate. 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 Okay. Yes. Now, we like to call them honeycomb coral because some of our examples, like this one right here, if I could just dig that out from the oh. under bag. Yeah. Oh, An even larger example. See, it kind of looks like honeycomb, so we call it honeycomb coral. But yes, it is tabulate. Tabulate. Just another form of coral. And how big um, would that grow? I've this would grow. Rocks. This is one of the larger examples that we have, although if you've seen modern day coral, it could be about the size of a couch, right? So it could oh, yeah, be yeah. much, much larger. Oh, yes. cool. So this is just a fragment. It's just so rare for them to stay intact over so many years. So, yes. Interesting. Very rare. All right. And last, I, I haven't shown my viewers this. This one here. I'm, I'm thinking it's kind of like some type of tunnel. And you got a very good example here yes. of the tunnels. It's not actually a fossil of a living creature at all. It's the tunnels that left behind. Yeah, if you want to lift that up, perfect. So this is essentially a smaller representation of what we have on this rock right here. And this is what we thought originally was a actually fossil of a plant, right? Yeah. But it turns out that's not true. It actually plants fossilize in very thin layers of carbon. Now this, as he was saying, is a very good example of a trace fossil. And the trace fossil is when a creature such as a worm burrows its way into the mud. It creates tunnels. Essentially like an anthill, right? Mm -hmm. You can picture that. Then over time after that creature dies, those tunnels are filled with rock and sediment and it hardens. 
Now limestone, if you didn't know, it actually dissolves at a faster rate than most rock, which kind of explains the three-dimensional pronounced shape and discoloration. Now if you didn't know, see, all these fossils which we have on display are touched daily by a lot of folks, and people actually have oil in their hands which seeps into the limestone and makes it even darker. So when we first found this rock, it would have been much more gray, much more bright than it is right now. Yes, this is a fantastic example of a trace fossil. All right, I gotta put this down. It's getting heavy. I don't wanna <laughs> break it. You guys know how much of klutz I am. All right, well, that's awesome, Scott. You really helped me with uh, identifying some Perfect. of these fossils Perfect. I found. Thanks for coming, thanks. Oh, appreciate it very much. All right, guys, Bond Share Caves, check her out. It's worth the drive out here. Awesome, love to see you guys. Yeah. Peace. See ya. Perfect. Oh, that was that's awesome, sick. Scott. One take, woo! <laughs> At the start, I was like, ugh. Well, you're like a very good public speaker to begin with uh, from the tour, obviously, so. Thanks, awesome. That's so cool. That's the sick camera. Woohoo! All right, guys, that was sick. Thank you, Scott, for teaching us all about those cool fossils. Stay tuned for the next episode where I'm going to explore Bond Share Caves and uh, give you like a first person view of what it's like down there. Oh, and there's also some sinkholes too, so we'll check those out.